Let's talk about the mechanics and systems of Bioshock 1, and what better level to do that than in the core of Hephaestus. So, what are game mechanics and systems? Uh, game mechanics are how things function in a game. So, for example, uh, I hit F to loot this lo this lockbox. I pull some resources out of it, and then I can no longer loot it. That is a mechanic. I shoot the crossbow bolt. It, uh, it happens to be a trap bolt. It creates this trap. That is a mechanic. I can grab it with telekinesis, which I do not have right now, and then redirect it, or I can just simply crouch underneath it to avoid it. So these 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 would be like fundamental mechanics of, in this case, the crossbow and trap bolts. So the game has a few mechanics that everyone's familiar with. Uh, it has health. You know, you take damage. When you get hit by enemies, when you get shot by enemies, you lose health. When you hit zero health, you die. Uh, by default, it has this mechanic called Vita Chambers, which resurrects you. Uh, the idea behind Vita Chambers is that they wanted the game to feel more like a kind of like arena shooter multiplayer game. So instead of you having to just like load a random checkpoint, it basically just respawns you near the action, so you can just jump back right into it without feeling like gameplay was interrupted. So that's like the main idea behind Vita Chambers. Uh, personally, I have this them disabled because for a single player game, I want as much challenge out of it as I possibly can have. Uh, but there's no reason that like you're not forced to disable them and there's nothing wrong with not disabling them. It does make the game easier, but the idea behind them is to keep you in the action no matter what. So that's that, that, was, real, that was more of the motivation than making the game easier. Uh, but it does happen to make the game easier. Uh, you have Eve, which is your resource for using plasmids. Essentially it's mana. It's even blue like mana and you even kind of cast spells. So even though plasmids are uh, engineering, like genetic engineering, it's essentially magic, right? Uh, so you have health, you have magic, basically you have Eve. You have two resources that can refill both of those. You have med kits, which can instantly heal you at the press of a button. So for example, I take some damage I can just instantly refill my health. Um, so, and also for Eve, interestingly, you actually have to inject with an animation. So, health, I, I don't know why health is instant. I feel like that, that it should be like a little animation because then it would make the game a little bit harder. Uh, but it is instant. So, there's just a little discrepancy there in the game design where it's like one is visual and the other is just like you're healed. So, okay. You also have your weapons. So the first weapon you get is the wrench. Uh, just swings. And it's it, it's essentially a hit scan close ranged weapon. So even though it's a melee weapon, it still produces like a bullet impact. And it just simply does not hit af after like, you know, a certain range. Like once you get so far, it will no longer hit. So you can kind of see here. It's like around here. Uh, the wrench also can, like, hit over objects, so, like, if an enemy is, like, over here, you can hit them from, like, here. It's quite effective at doing that. It has some tonics that increase its, uh, like, damage and its attack speed, and it also can increase damage versus unaware opponents. Uh, so the wrench has a lot going on for it. It has, it also has this frozen field tonic that can have a chance to freeze enemies on top of dealing increased base, uh, f like, frost damage, so definitely a pretty powerful weapon. Uh, the next weapon is the pistol. Uh, it has two upgrades. One increases the damage, another increases the ammo capacity. So you can kind of see here, like it visually changes it too, which is cool. This is definitely something I missed from Bioshock Infinite, where like the upgrades are just like invisible. I think this this like visual upgrade system is kind of interesting and unique because then it communicates to the player this weapon is upgraded. Whereas like in Bioshock Infinite there's simply no visual indication that the weapon is improved in any way. You just see bigger damage numbers. Uh, there's also different ammo types. This is a big feature of this game. Uh, in a lot of cases, the ammo types can be boiled down to this. Uh, they're either going to be elemental or they're going to be armor piercing slash anti-personnel. So in the case of the pistol and the SMG, you have anti-personnel rounds, which deal increased damage to humanoids and not machines or big daddies, and then you have armor piercing rounds which deal increased damage to machines and big daddies. And then you have base ammo which just deals like less damage to both of those. 
So uh, for the shotgun, you have electric buck, which shocks and stuns enemies. It also increases like the damage if they're standing in water. And then for exploding buck, it, it, this is the highest base damage shotgun ammo uh, that also can set oil slicks on fire and set foes on fire. Uh, for the frag grenade, uh, this one actually does have some interesting ammo types. It has the heat seeking RPG, which does really high damage. Uh, will seek out enemies and actually like home in on them. Uh, and it also can set oil slicks on fire as it is fire damage. Uh, you also have proximity like mines, which can be placed and put also put on objects and thrown with telekinesis. This is a really common strategy for attacking big daddies. You can also place them in like a doorway, so if a big daddy isn't aggroed yet, you can place a bunch of proxy mines, aggro him, he'll run into the proxy mines, take a ton of damage, and that can really help you out in saving resources for the big daddy fight. You also have the camera, which allows you to do research on foes, causing you to increase your damage dealt to them, as well as sometimes giving you unique and specific tonics only acquired from research, which is also nice, and sometimes even like abilities that will be always active. So if you research bouncers enough, you'll just get 50% wrench damage increase without equipping it. It's just like an ability. So research is very useful. And there's other things too, like Houdini splicers will drop um, health kits, or it's, it's, I think it's spider splicers, but yeah. So there's, there's uh, researching is always worth it. You have the chemical thrower, which shoots in a stream. Uh, it has liquid nitrogen, which freezes foes. Uh, it has fire, which sets them on fire, and then electric gel, which can shock them and also deals increased damage to foes standing in water. So you have all these interactions between the weapons and the plasmids and the environment. Uh, so in the case of fire, it's oil slicks and explosives. In the case of electric abilities and like electric gel and trap bolts and things like this and like electric buck, you have like damage scaling on foes in water. So there's this inherent notion of, like, every game says this, but it's like play it your own way, where you have all these different options. So I could kill this big daddy by shooting it with steel bolts. I could kill this big daddy by setting a bunch of trap bolts in its path. I could set a bunch of proxy mines in its path. I could just use electric gel on it and then just keep shooting it with electric buck until it dies. I could use a wrench build that freezes it and just keep whacking it while it's frozen and then shatter it. There's a, you have like, the idea behind a lot of the mechanics and systems is um, you have variety and this is done on purpose. So one of the main complaints I have seen and I, I do kind of agree with about like Bioshock Infinite is that it doesn't have as much variety as Bioshock 1 or 2, which have all these different ammo types, all these different abilities, all these, all this like planning like you can plan f for like boss fights, like in Bioshock One in, or in Bioshock Infinite, the boss fights are just you just are thrown into a boss fight. You can't really prepare for it. It's just go 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 go, fight the thing, and hope for the best. And if you're good enough, you'll succeed. And if you're not, you'll die. Uh, in this game, you can plan a lot for the, the the big encounters. So that's also another I would say mechanic, because usually in a game it's very standard for you to encounter a boss and to be forced to fight it. In this game. The bosses are in the form of big daddies, and you also want to get them because of the little mis the little sisters mechanic. So little sisters are protected by big daddies, and you have to kill the big daddy to get the little sister. You can save the little sister for half Eve, or you can harvest them for double. And if you save three, Tenenbaum will send a little sister with a gift of 200 or 240 Adam. I think it's 200, plus uh, exclusive tonics and plasmids you can only get from saving little sisters so even even the choice to save or not save little sisters could be like replay value for you beating the game again just to see like the different ending uh to um see how it changes how you play the game because having more atom early on definitely helps but if you're used to the game you don't really need it in the early levels anyways so there's this like notion of deferred gratification baked into the mechanics which is kind of interesting uh but overall i would say Oh yeah, I did miss a huge thing. Uh, the plasmid and tonic systems. Let's actually look at that. Oops, I the tab there. Let me find a thing, a gene tonic thing, so I can I can go over those. All right, this guy. 
I also forgot to mention that uh, grenades do knock over basic enemies down. They knock uh, basic enemies over if you hit them with it. All right. So one of the another big thing is spending the atom. Uh, you can unlock new tonics. You can unlock tonic slots. There's different types of tonics. You can also unlock plasmid slots and new plasmids. So the atom aspect of the game and the managing atom is a huge thing as far as the design is concerned. Um, so the first slot is plasmids. These are the active abilities you have that you can use on enemies. Uh, these generally will directly influence combat. So like Electro Bolt can shock a dude, incinerate, can set something on fire. Uh, so if we go to Security Bullseye, for example, this is like a kind of sneakier one. If there's hostile turrets and you throw this on an enemy, the turrets will ignore you and focus on that enemy. So this can be very useful for like getting a big daddy killed or having a big daddy duel a bunch of turrets and security. This can like conserve a lot of resources and is actually quite powerful. Uh, telekinesis is more utility, but you can pick up corpses and throw them. It does decent damage, even on the hardest setting, until, like, I want to say the third or fourth level, then it starts to become not as good. Uh, but there's all these different options. Uh, the next slot is the physical tonic slot. These generally will affect combat abilities or things that relate to combat, um, like, like in terms of your actual character. So... Bloodlust, you hit a guy, you get some health and eve. Uh, sport boost, move faster and swing the wrench faster. Uh, medical expert, heal more. Security evasion, cameras take more time to see you so that if you're running by a camera, they have to spot you for longer before they can aggro. So this is more about improving your guy's stats and his survivability. And uh, then you have engineering tonics which are usually related to conserving money, conserving resources, making hacking easier. So you can kind of see here, uh, reduce difficulty on hacking, slow down the speed of hacking, uh, reduce price of vending machines. I have both of those. These are very useful. They make, they, they make it like, you know, buying things much cheaper. Uh, focused hacker, too fewer overloads. Hacking expert, too fewer alarm and too fewer overloads. So both of like the first two and then four and five make hacking easier, and then three and six make everything cheaper. So if I hack a machine, it makes it cheaper, and then if I have vending expert one and two, it makes it even more cheaper. So, so these are mostly related to resources and hacking. And then you have combat tonic slots, which generally will increase your damage dealt in, vari in a variety of ways. Uh, so for example, wrench jockey one and two scale your wrench damage. You have damage research, which increases the bonus damage from research. So if you research every enemy in the game, you'll have bonus damage. This increases it. Objectively, this is one of the best things to run because it just scales your damage outright. Uh, you have frozen field one and two. These scale your wrench damage by adding frost, like bonus frost damage. And also you take less damage from cold, which is nice. Uh, there's not too many enemies that deal cold damage. Uh, and you have a chance to get fro like to freeze enemies. Uh, you have Wrench Lurker, which quiets your footsteps and scales melee damage against unaware opponents. And then there's also other things. Static Discharge, if you get hit, you discharge electricity. Uh, you have Human Inferno, which scales fire damage. So this actually increases the base damage of the chemical thrower and of things like the heat-seeking uh, missile or rocket. And what else? The uh, Explosive Buck. So... Human Inferno actually is quite good, and it scales your incinerate damage. You also have Armored Shell, which just reduces physical damage taken. So there's a lot of there's a lot of variety for which tonics you run and why. Like eventually, if you get so good at hacking, or if you have enough auto hacks, you can change all of your engineering tonics to be whatever you need. I usually end up just using like Clever Inventor, and I, I don't remember the other one. I think it's like Master Inventor, where it requires fewer resources to craft things, and then the other one doubles the amount, or Prolific Inventor, it doubles the amount you craft. So, like, you can craft things for cheaper and you get two times as much. So, there's a lot, there's definitely a lot. Uh, there's also the crafting. So, that was kind of a good segue into crafting. So, there's these you invent machines. You get, like, junk resources as you're going, you can craft different things. You can craft auto hacks, exploding buck, 
Uh, these are all the things you can craft aside from some extra tonics that appear as you go throughout the game, like trap bolts, electric gel, heat seeking RPGs. These are pretty big value things. And the fact that it's just, you just create them from junk. Like I can I can craft 10 times six trap bolts. So I can craft 60 trap bolts right now. This is absolutely insane. Uh, this is, this is kind of, is broken in my opinion. Like I think crafting is broken if used optimally because trap bolts are so good they can single-handedly kill big daddies if you just set like 10 in a row. It'll kill most big daddies and you can scale their damage with electric flesh. So this game has a lot of systems in it that keep people engaged because you have your, your genes, like your gene tonics, you have your crafting, you have your resource collection, you have the weapons, the weapon upgrades. Uh, there's quite a bit going on with it so it's just... so right now i'm actually exploiting something about the smg um so here's me firing by holding down left click there's recoil it's pretty manageable though you just hold down here's me firing just by rapidly clicking same fire rate, zero recoil. So that's why you hear me rapidly clicking when I'm using the SMG. The SMG can't headshot, however. Uh, that's also another mechanic. So, headshotting. So only certain weapons can headshot. It does deal increased damage. Each weapon has its own headshot mod multiplier. Uh, for the pistol, I believe it's times two. Or no, it's times four. And for the shotgun, I believe it's times two. So the shotgun can headshot. But one problem with it is, as you can kind of see here, like these are the... Like, it's not... The most accurate weapon. So if you want to get accurate headshots uh, on enemies with small heads, this is roughly your headshot range. So you have to get like this close to enemies to get perfect headshots on them to deal two times damage. Uh, another weapon that can headshot is the crossbow, which has I think like a ten times or higher damage multiplier. Uh, it's extremely. It, it literally one shots any enemy that can get headshotted on any difficulty without any upgrades. This is how, this is the most powerful weapon in the game by far. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay when shooting it. It's not instant. You can kind of see there. It's like if I shoot far, there's a little bit of a travel time. Uh, but you get used to it pretty quick. Um, so, so that's headshotting. Uh, what else do we have? We have the power to the people machines, which upgrade weapons. I, I kind of like referenced that earlier without actually talking about the machines. You use them once. You get a free upgrade to a weapon. And then it's closed for like permanently. So these are something people look for when they explore. Definitely useful. You have the gatherer's gardens where you upgrade things and spend your atom. This is where you buy different things. You can also buy Eve and health upgrades. Uh, each level, you can buy one heat, uh, health and one Eve upgrade, which increase your max health and Eve. So mechanically, this game has a lot, especially compared to most games. There's definitely like a lot of variety and a lot of replay value. Um, you can like completely just run like like one or two weapons the whole time just for like variety if you want to try like a challenge or something like that. Uh, but let's see, did I miss anything? You have your vending machines, your ammo bandits, and your circus of values. Ammo bandits just sell ammo. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I think I hit all the major systems um, for the most part. Uh, definitely let me know if I missed anything. Uh, I personally like to play with Vita Chambers off and on the hardest setting on Survivor difficulty. Supposedly, oh yeah, I didn't mention hacking, I guess. Okay, so one of the things you can do in the game is hacking. You can make enemy things your friends, like enemy turrets, enemy cameras your friends. Hostile cameras, I guess. So, wait, hold on. Okay, that was just an alarm I have, so... Okay, so... Hacking lets you make things that are hostile, like, friendly. So, cameras are one of the best things to hack. They will generally, like, never get destroyed unless, like, an enemy throws a grenade or something and they get caught in the explosion. But because I have this camera, any enemy walking by will trigger an alarm. If you have a turret, the turret will shoot them. Uh, this will spawn friendly uh, bots, like security bots. Uh, hacking vending machines reduces the cost of things as well. So hacking in general is something you always want to be doing. And it can help you out greatly while you're playing the game. Uh, but aside from that, definitely let me know if I missed any of the mechanics or systems in the game. I think I got most of them, if not all of them. And that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in another Bioshock video.